Introducing the Bite Me Cannabis Club. The Bite Me Cannabis Club aims to be an inclusive online space for cannabis lovers. Whether you're simply curious about how cannabis can improve your life or you're fully seasoned, there's always more to learn. When you join the Bite Me Cannabis Club, you'll have access to like-minded people interested in cannabis, monthly workshops, live Q&As, recipes and recipe swaps, digital cookbooks, a fully functional chat feature, and a whole lot more. For a limited time, it's only $5 a month with a 30-day free trial so you can try it out and see if it's right for you. This isn't just another Facebook group or confusing Discord channel. I carefully chose a platform that offers a clear, uncluttered, and seamless community experience. See for yourself. Join today. Say hello. I can't wait to connect with you there. Join the Bite Me Cannabis Club today. Link in your podcast app. In this episode, we're going to be doing a massage oil that you can use in several different ways. Welcome to Bite Me, the show about edibles where I help you take control of your high life. I am your host, Marge, and thank you for being here today. It is a cold but sunny day where I am. I'm thank you to have you, thankful to have you listening along. And I think you're really going to enjoy this recipe because not only is Valentine's Day coming up, But this is self-care month, and I'm trying to bring you recipes that you can use to take care of yourself during these difficult times. And whether or not you're listening to this in the midst of the pandemic, or whether you're listening to this at a later time and life has gotten easier for us all, regardless, taking care of yourself should always be a priority, and this massage oil is going to help. So self-care month continues with this one. Which brings me to ask, have you tried Tracy's pain relieving topical that I shared last week in last week's episode? You won't regret it if you give that one a try. Now that's a completely different recipe. It's very different texture, but I find it works so well. For me, I'm standing a lot sometimes at work. And of course, I'm sitting a lot sometimes when I'm at home working on the podcast. And regardless, it seems to be no matter what I do, I tend to experience lower back pain, which is probably not uncommon for many of you out there listening. And I find the nice thing about this topical is you just apply it. Uh, You can apply it liberally, but I don't think it takes that much. And you'll just notice after a little bit of time has passed, maybe, you know, like 10, 15 minutes that that ache that you sort of feel has just melt it away. And you don't even really notice it going away because unlike using something like a Tiger Bomb, which I used to use a lot, or A535 or some of those other pain relieving topicals that are available at the drugstore, they always come with such a scent. Tiger Bomb in particular, and I mentioned that one only because I've used that one a lot in the past. Is it? Is there something about the scent of it that makes you think it's working better or that spicy heat that it adds when you apply it to your skin? I'm not sure. And while I found stuff like Tiger Bomb mildly effective. I'm going to say mildly, not even moderately effective. It did help sometimes relieve some aches and pains, but I found overall it didn't work that well for me. And this topical that I posted about last week is delightful because it ha- doesn't have a strong scent. And of course, when you're making your own, you can just add whatever scent you like. So you can have it unscented. You can add scents uh, with essential oils, depending on what smells you prefer and you just rub it into your back and oh it's so nice it's so nice and in fact I actually used some on my feet the other day as well I put it on before I was going to bed my feet were pretty dry and I'd been at work standing for hours and so sometimes your feet are one of those often overlooked body parts that need a lot of care and I just put it all over my feet. And then I put on a pair of socks as well to hold in the moisture because my feet were getting pretty dry as well. And I really hate the feeling of those rough heels. And I just kind of gives me the willies anyway, but I just wanted to soften them up and give them a little TLC because I have been standing a lot. And it was really nice for that too. So don't just think that this is for aches and pains. Obviously it's effective for that. And that's probably why you made it in the first place, but you can certainly use it for taking care of tired feet and moisturizing as well because the ingredients in there are very moisturizing too. If you're looking for more self-care recipes as well, another recipe that I recommend that I covered a, a while ago is 
infused bath bombs. And I'll link to that one in the show notes too, because those are actually surprisingly easy to make. The only thing you need to do is get the bath bomb molds off of Amazon. They're just like stainless steel metal half spheres so that you can press your your um, bath bomb into it and then let it set for a little bit and then pop them out. Um, you could probably finagle something else too if you didn't want to go to the expense of using something you might not be making use of all the time, but they weren't that expensive. So I'll link to that episode as well, because those are going to be pretty fun to make. I know we carry bath bombs in our dispensary and they can get pretty expensive when you're, when you're buying infused bath products like that. And sometimes making them on your own is a more cost-effective way to make sure that you're also not getting the quality ingredients that you want, but not putting anything in them that you don't really want there. And I, I haven't tried the bath bombs on the legal market. I'm sure they're wonderful. I have tried bath salts on the legal market. And actually, I shouldn't say I tried them. My husband tried them and found them very, very relaxing. So whether you're wanting to make your own or looking for some out in the in the legal world, by all means, the bath bombs is a really nice way to just melt the stress away. I mean, what's nicer than soaking in a hot tub for a little bit? So this week, we're going to be looking at a luxurious massage oil. And this episode will be airing before Valentine's Day, which will give you plenty of time to get the ingredients to make this particular massage oil in case you're looking to do something special with a loved one. And in this particular case, if you're listening to this in the year 2021, the world is in flux and you may not be able to go out and celebrate Valentine's Day as you traditionally might because things are open or closed. Who knows what's going on these days? New announcements seem to be coming all the time. But in any case, whether or not you're listening to this at that time, this massage oil is a wonderful way to show somebody that you care, not only by making it, but by hopefully using it on them as well. Because what says I love you more than a deep, relaxing massage, especially infused with cannabis. But the wonderful thing about this particular massage oil is whether or not you're using this oil with somebody special, somebody that you care about, you can use it in a variety of different ways. And the one thing I really liked about this episode is it is a little different because we're infusing uh, something other than the typical things I've talked about on the show, but you can customize it in a myriad of different ways and use it in, again, a multiple of different ways. So it's not just limited to that one use. What else can you use this massage oil for? Well, this is a short list, but not limited to. So obviously, it seems obvious, a lot of people might be using it for massage oil. But if that's not you, if you're not really into massages or giving them or whatever, then don't worry. Here's a few other ideas. You can use it as a really nice hand massage. Have you ever gone and gotten your nails done and they give you a really nice like hand and arm massage afterwards? I mean, how lovely is that? And sometimes just having a really fragrant, luxurious massage oil to massage into your hands can be really therapeutic. And hands tend to be another one of those body parts which go through a lot of which go through a lot over the course of a day. Of course, we're always using our hands. They're always exposed to the elements. They get cold, they get dry. They need TLC every so often. So do yourself a favor and try this massage oil out on your hands. Another way to use this oil, a head massage. And I was looking at a variety of different websites when I was when I was researching this particular episode. And one uh, website that I found recommended using peppermint and rosemary essential oils for an, a massage oil for the head in particular. And you can use it by massaging it into your temples and around to the base of your neck. You could probably even extend it into your head. I know when I'm getting my hair done that sometimes they give me a really nice scalp massage and that can feel really nice. And maybe you want a different set of essential oils if you're going to be doing more of the scalp versus the temples and the neck. But I do know that Oftentimes, temples can also be really good for relieving tension. Um, It can be good for focus. I have read that peppermint and rosemary are both good for focus. So if you're just looking to sort of de-stress, refocus, a nice, quick head massage can just do the trick. Another one, I already kind of touched on this, foot massage. But don't limit it just to your feet. You can do your foot massage for sure. And after a long day on your feet... 
I highly recommend it, of course. And then if you're just relaxing the evenings, putting over a nice pair of cozy socks can really help retain that moisture and soften up dry skin on your feet. But another way you could do to really maximize a foot massage is if you give yourself a, a foot massage or have somebody else do it for you if that's available to you. Or something that I often do several times a week is I just have a golf ball in my room. And oftentimes what I'll do is I'll just walk over to the golf ball and roll my foot over it. And that can feel really nice too. So you can pair that foot massage or that, you know, as you're rubbing in this oil, then finish off with rolling your foot over something like a golf ball. And that can feel really, really nice. Another option is a face massage. You might start at your chin using small circles and work your way up. And it can be a really nice way to help reduce tension and make your skin feel really good. And finally, why not um, stimulate your lymphatic drainage system with a nice leg massage? So what is the lymphatic system? The lymphatic system is made up of a whole network of lymph, lymph vessels, lymph nodes, lymph organs. And essentially, the system helps to maintain fluid balance in the body by collecting excess fluid and particulate matter from the tissues and depositing them into the bloodstream for removal. So you can help activate this lymphatic system because it doesn't have its own way of pumping through the body. And you can, you've probably heard of dry brushing. A lot of people recommend dry brushing to help activate this lymphatic system. But another way to do this would be through leg massage. And especially if you are at a type of job where you're standing a lot, this can feel really, really nice. And so you would start down, um, start down at your feet, nice circles, massaging your way up and just enjoy the self-care that that promotes. If you are someone that's on your feet all day, I also highly recommend you could pair that with something like a waterfall pose, which is basically lying on your back with your arms and your legs extended towards the ceiling, but in a very loose manner. So there's no tension and you're just holding it there. It sort of helps drain the blood from the extremities. Or you can do legs up the wall where you scoot your butt right up against the wall and you have your legs up that wall. That's another way to sort of help drain the blood from your feet. So there's a whole bunch of different ways you can use this massage oil. Actually, another one that I had written down that I forgot to mention is you could use it as a bath oil as well. You wouldn't need very much because obviously... It's an oil, oil and water don't mix too well, but it might be just a nice, simple way to add some of the relaxing benefits of the cannabis and essential oils in your bath. So this massage oil is a multi-use massage oil that you can apply to any body part you really think of. So I mentioned a few particular ones, but of course that's not limited to maybe a nice using it as just a, a moisturizing oil for your body. Some people really do like oils for that kind of thing. I have used several in the past. You get out of the shower, apply it to serve sort of very light, uh, lightly damp skin, and it really helps to add some moisture to the skin. So if you don't have a partner or it's not feasible right now or whatever the case might be, don't worry. This massage oil is still for you. There's plenty of different ways you can use it to get the best out of it. And the nice thing is this is an MCT oil based massage oil. And if you're using an MCT based oil that you buy from the grocery store or a health food store, it's going to be food grade, which also means that you can use this MCT infused MCT oil in any of your cooking or baking as well. So you don't just have to keep it or make it for body care products, although it lends itself really well to that kind of thing. So what a couple of things, caveats to think about with this is that this type of oil can stain your your sheets or whatever if you're not careful. So if you are using it for massage, maybe just put down an, a towel just to prevent drips from getting on your sheets. Because um, you might notice later that there's some dark spots if it you know, if you get some drips on the sheets, like I said, so you might need some extra stain removal when you go to do laundry, but a towel can really remedy this pretty quickly. And these oils, if you do make like an MCT based massage oil, it should last at least up to a year. They have a pretty decent shelf life. So this is something you can make a bigger batch of if you're finding you're using it a lot and just have it on hand whenever you need. 
This massage oil is an MCT based massage oil. So you're going to be infusing the MCT oil. You're going to be pairing that with a carrier oil like jojoba or almond. You could use coconut, but I prefer the other two only because they are liquid oils and therefore easily mixed with your MCT infused MCT oil. You can also use a combination of jojoba and almond oil. They pair very nicely together. And then you might add some essential oils. But what I would highly recommend for this particular recipe is that you leave out the essential oils. And I'm going to tell you why. If you do decide that you want to be using this particular massage oil for a variety of different uses, like I've mentioned, then instead of adding the essential oils in your big container why not customize it for use? So if you're somebody, I do have quite a few uh, essential oils at my house. Uh, I do like to use diffusers. In fact, I turn my diffuser on right now because I really do like the smell. I have peppermint and rosemary, my diffuser beside me right now, because as I've heard, it is good for concentration and focus. And here I am trying to concentrate on myself talking while not getting myself distracted by what's going on outside the window. But A lot of the websites I've looked at suggested different massage oils and combinations of essential oils for particular purposes. So instead of, like I said, making a big batch with all the same essential oil, when you go to have that bath, maybe you want to use some of your your, um, massage oil in the bath, and then you can add the essential oils at that time that might really resonate with you while you're having the bath. Maybe you're having your bath at night and lavender and chamomile or something like that would be nice to add for the relaxation components. If you are using it to spice things up in the bedroom, then perhaps there are scents that might be better suited to that. Alang Alang came up a lot, which is a floral scent that I absolutely adore. I also find that one to be pretty reasonably priced. Some places have recommended like uh, rose or jasmine essential oils or ones like that, which are also lovely, but tend to be quite expensive. So depends on your budget, of course. Uh, again, the head massage uh the head massage recommended peppermint and a rosemary combination of essential oils to really help ease tension and allow for focus. But the sky's the limit. I mean, if uh, something that might also be really nice might be a little bit of vanilla, or perhaps you like citrus scents, or you like some of those woodsy scents, The it's endless what kind of scents that you can put together. And just go to the store, smell a few things, see what you like, and add that to your essential oil at the time. Now, of course, if you're pretty particular about what you like and what you don't like, by all means, go ahead and add whatever you need to your essential oil. The recipe is going to be in the show notes. I'm going to try and include a few different combination ideas for essential oils that you can try out for particular purposes. But All you're going to need is your infused MCT oil, which I made specially for this particular recipe. And it's made pretty much the same way you'd make an infused olive oil. So if you're unclear about that, I can add that recipe to the show notes as well that's on the recipes page on my website, but I'll link to that. But you're essentially making it the same way. So your infused MCT oil. I also, for this particular one, because I was interested, I did grow some medical mass CBD cannabis over the summer. And I did use a CBD dominant strain for this particular one because I really wanted the the benefits of the CBD in this particular recipe. But of course, you can use whatever cannabis you happen to have on hand. If you do have some that's CBD rich, I would recommend that for this because the pain relieving uh, properties of CBD can be a game changer for a lot of people. And I have heard from listeners who have found CBD to be extremely effective in, in that. And I would say I fall into that category myself. So if you have a CBD rich flower available, by all means, try that. Um, and if you have, if you don't have something like that on hand, but you're inclined, you can go, I mean, you can always go to a legal dispensary and pick up some CBD rich flower because it's pretty widely available, at least where I am. CBD rich flower is definitely growing in popularity and refining it more and more on the legal market. And I think typically too, like I, I did get some direction on this from the CBD Ultimate Guide to CBD book by Jamie Evans. She has a really nice massage oil in that book. 
So in her book, she recommends when making a CBD olive oil, which would be the same recipe you would follow using an MCT oil, she uses three and a half grams of CBD rich decarboxylated flour. So for this particular recipe, that'll make a pretty big batch. I think it's using a couple of cups. It's just one cup. Or you, I used one cup of MCT oil as well to the three and a half grams of CBD rich flour. Or did I add more? Actually, I better check. And that is exactly why I have my gold leaf journal. This is a nice little aside because I always think, oh, I'm going to remember what I did. And then I don't. So that's why I write things down. So I do have here, I made this MCT oil. I actually used 14 grams of medical mass CBD flour. Now, actually, it was the trim leaves, leaves and popcorn buds. I still have all the, all the dried bud that I made, but I used the trim. It was decarboxylated, and then I used two cups of MCT oil because I wanted to make a bigger batch because I knew I'd be using it for a few different purposes. So I've basically doubled the amount, but you could do, th- I mean, again, in the book, The Ultimate Guide to CBD, in her MCT oil recipe, she's using whole flour and I'm using shake and trim. So that was one of the rationales that I used for using more. But you can always experiment to see what works best for you. But if you're having to go and buy CBD-rich flour, in my experience where I am, CBD-rich flour does tend to be a little less expensive. So it's not out of the question to buy some of that in order to cook with it for this purpose. There is some flour out there that seems almost sacrilege to cook with it because it's so beautiful, but a lot of the CBD flour doesn't necessarily fall into that category I know there's a brand that I really like that I recommend to a lot of people and you can buy it by the gram for about $7.20 and it's an 18% CBD flour, which is quite high in CBD as well. And that flour I'm thinking of is virtually no THC. I can link to that in the show notes for those of you who happen to be in Ontario and would have access to that um, particular option. So I hope that you're able to make use of this massage oil to take care of yourself a little bit, even if it's just something small every day, you know, give your hands some tender loving care, your poor feet that work so hard for you, a little bit of lymphatic drainage massage, that tension relieving head massage, maybe you're able to get a full on back massage from somebody who cares. Or you can give one to somebody to show that you care. There's so many different ways you can make use of this oil. And I think you're going to really like it. Look in the show notes for all the recipes and ideas for essential oils. And I hope you give it a shot. Let me know what you think of it. I'm always open to hearing from listeners. And until next time, my friends, stay high. Are you tired of trying edibles that are inconsistent in strength and flavor? Attempting to figure out your tolerance? Do you want to take control of your edibles experience and find the optimum combination of factors that results in the best outcome? If so, this edibles journal is perfect for you. The Bite Me Edibles Journal provides a convenient and organized way for you to track and record your edibles experience, whether it's homemade edibles or store-bought. It includes 48 fillable pages It's sized 8.5 by 11 for plenty of writing space, includes information on calculating the potency of homemade edibles, and it was created by an edibles expert. Whether you're a seasoned edibles enthusiast or just starting out on your cannabis journey, the Bite Me Edibles Journal is an essential tool for anyone interested in enjoying their edibles to the fullest. Take control of your high life with this convenient and helpful resource. Add it to your Amazon cart today. Tap the link in the show notes.